Welcome back, traders and investors. We have Paul Bratby on the line. He is founder of Wave5Trade.com. Now, uh, we have a lot of people on the show with uh, different backgrounds and different educations, but Paul was a British soldier, soldier who served 17 years as an engineering manager in the British Army. Paul, how are you doing today? I'm doing well, thank you. Doing very well. No, oh, that's good. All right, so you spent 17 years in the British Army as an engineering manager, and now you're trading the markets. Did, can you draw on anything from your experiences uh, in the Army that you're relating to the markets? I think uh, one of the biggest things is discipline um, for me. Um, with being traders uh, and being military, sometimes you have to be quite heartless um, and not allow emotions to, to interfere. With, um, with your task at hand. And that's one of the main things that I use uh, in my trade, my trade management strategy. Um, I stick to my strategy and I'm disciplined. Okay. So, you know, regardless of, of what's going out, is going on in the market, I stick to my, to my strategies. Okay, we'll we'll get into those strategies in a second here. Uh, but uh, you know, first of all, you're uh, you're over in Spain today. Or you live in Spain, correct? That's correct. Yeah, in the south of Spain. Yeah, south of Spain. So, how do you uh, how do you work your trading day? Um, pretty. Much, I mean, we're only an hour difference to the UK. I, I usually get up around about six a.m. Um, Spanish time just to see if there's anything happening on the Forex because usually before the FTSE open, you might get some uh, big swings on, on the Forex. And then obviously prepare for the FTSE open. Um, then around about 11 a.m., everything goes quiet, so I don't have a swim and just chill out and take it easy. And then, then back in an hour before the U.S. markets open um, and sort of spend the rest of the afternoon trading um, but most of my trades are daily and weekly charts, so I don't, you know, tend to spend every single waking minute in front of the um, in front of the charts. Cause I also run the blog as well, you see, so that takes quite a lot of time. I didn't know at the time how long it would take to actually trade full time and then write the posts on every trade and every when you're moving trading stops and all that sort of thing. It, it becomes very labour intensive. Uh, so let's talk about your strategies, uh, what they are and how you develop them. Okay, I have two main strategies, and they all revolve around the Elliott Fifth Wave. Uh, the with trend strategy, either short or long, mainly long at the moment, um, I'm looking to enter on the, the Fifth Wave after the Wave 4 pullback, um, and then take profits when, when we hit a, a Wave 5, you know, it's been higher than Wave 3. Um, and then not so often I look for trend reversal trades. So the end of the wave five usually has been on a long bearish trend, for example, CIG on a daily. Um, I've been long on that for quite a while after the uh, bearish trend reversal. Uh, and indicators that work around that. I, for a trend, for a with trend trade, I have nine indicators I look at, and at wow. least seven of those have to be in the green, as it were, for me to, to uh, look at entering into the trade. Uh, and a trend reversal, pretty much slightly different indicators. Um, but I, I use a, a very good software, um, eSignal Advanced Get, uh, which allows me to save a lot of time looking, uh, identifying the waves and using the indicators to, to ensure I'm entering or the high probability that I'm entering at the right time. Okay. And uh, so you said uh, you also look for, uh, you know, trend trend reversals. Could you just, you know, perhaps give us an example of, uh, you know, a stock that uh, has had a, had a reversal as of late? I mean, do you trade the momentum stocks, uh, you know, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Tesla, Netflix? Are you active in those stocks? I am active on the social media stocks purely on a day trading. I've, I've gone short on all three this week and um, uh, a little over 12% of my trading count balance in, two, in a less than two days. Uh, they're on 15-minute charts. But trend reversals, I'm more looking at daily and weekly charts. 
uh, and I scanned for those using the scanner. The CIG was one such trend reversal, uh, hit it bottom in um, about mid-February this year on a daily chart. Uh, CIG. Yep, I got it up there. Yeah, so basically what it, um, I took a uh, make or break um, from a previous pivot low in around about August of last year, and it gave me a target both in time and price. Um, between uh, the middle of January to the beginning of March, and it actually hit that price of around 521 um, or 523 uh, at that time. And then I looked for movement back out of that trend channel, which was quite tight. Uh, and I entered the trade um, on the 6th of March at 5.89. Um, and I'm still in it now, but I've moved my trailing stop loss to 7.59. Um, it nearly took it out yesterday, um, but it, um, it's, in, it's in a massive support level at the moment, around about the, um, the 7.65 level. It's a big support level, um, so I thought I was safe with that trailing stop, and uh, it was a whisker away yesterday, but it uh, pulled back okay. <laughs> Okay, so uh, this trade is something that you're in uh, for quite some time here, going back to March, so you do have a longer time frame. You said that uh, you were short to Facebook. What what was uh, your tip? Uh, was it something that you did on a day trade, or was it something that you held for a couple days? What was, uh, what was your signal to get into Facebook? Okay, Facebook was on a 15-minute chart, if you want to pull that up. Okay. And um, basically, on the... Um, on the e-signal advanced get software, there's a, a very, very cool study that uses lots of algorithms and looks for, looks for breakouts. I used it a lot on Forex, but I, I decided a few months ago to trial it on shorter time frames for just social media stocks so I could um, measure it. And it works very well in that when there's noise and chatter and not really much happening on, on that sort of chart. So... Um, say between uh, 15.30 on the 3rd of the 7th at the end of last week and at 10.30 on, um, on the 7th, it was, um, those bars were pretty much it gone range bound. But then the bar at 10.45 uh, made, made a dash down uh, and that, that bar turned red on my software from grey, so that's the first indication that there's a breakout. Um, then I would put um, the entry point at 50% uh, again below that to enter and the stop loss at 50% above the high for this particular short. Um, and then the trade triggered at 11.15 on that chart, on that, on that bar for the uh, 15 minutes. And then I go out at... Um, 1.15 yesterday, taking 3% on my trading account balance. Um, it's quite a severe move. And similar moves on, on Twitter and LinkedIn, actually. And they all presented um, with the right indicators. And I, I got in on all of them and um, had, a, had a good start to the week. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Um, do you do you use the outright equities to short things, or do you enter your positions via the options market? No, I trade. Uh, I spread bet because I'm a UK citizen. I have a spread betting account in the UK for uh, for my short term trades. So for day trading, for forex, things like that. For longer terms, I trade contracts for different CFDs, um, and again. Uh, they're all sort of leveraged, leveraged products. I do buy physical stocks as well, uh, but they're they're more of uh, long-term pension um, stocks. Okay, all right. And uh, can you give me any examples of any uh, any stocks that you're holding uh, longer term? Okay, so um, Hummingbird on the AIM market, uh, HUM on the on London. Uh, I'm holding that longer term, but uh, to be honest, I'm in quite a bit of profit on that at the moment because I got in around about the uh, 20 mark and we're at um, 
57 at the moment. I've put a, um, a sell order on at 64, uh, a previous high that it reached. Hummingbird, H-U-M for mother. H-U-M, okay, is that cross-listed here? Yeah. No, no, that because HUM is some mana here. So, what do you use for your targets on stock? Do you use previous highs and lows, or do you uh, use projections from your waves? I use projection from my waves, but also I might uh, stay in a larger stock. For example, um, in, in the UK, we've got uh, Scottish and Southern Electric, um, and stocks like that are good dividends payers. So, they, they would be um, a regular income for me. Um, you know, and I, and I could be in them for for, for years, um, as long as we, because I the, the the idea is I'm you know they're they're five sort of year terms, whereas Hummingbird I've been in since uh, I've been in a year now, uh, and we've risen uh, a, a fair amount. It's a young um, company, mining company, uh, exploration, uh, and we've had we've had it's been choppy, but we we've, we've hit. Some new wave fight. We've actually had um, two uh, bullish uh, wave five movements in between there. We've had a, uh, a bearish one, and now we're, we're, we're back on a bullish movement. We've just had a wave three. It's pulled back wave four, uh, and I'm looking to get out at uh, 64 pence. I have 10,000 shares. Um, it hit that high in March this year. Um, but it hit a major sort of resistance level, and I want to get out of this young miner because it, it's been a lot of um, it's been a reasonably long time. Uh, it's you know you've almost you've tripled your money, so it, it's time to get out because there's no dividends on that because they're not actually earning any money at the moment. They're still trying to find gold. Okay, all right. And uh, what what do you think? You, you know how how long have you been trading, uh, Paul? How long have you been active in the markets? <laughs> Uh, six years. And, six years now. And, and how and how long did it take you to, you know, be profitable and define your strategies? I think really it took a good two and a half to three years to to understand that initially I was one of those ninety nine percent of people that put money in the account and lost it within a month. Um, and then you start to educate yourself. You start to read books. You start to try and find a strategy or strategies that um, suit your mentality, um, suit your lifestyle. At that time, I was still uh, consulting around the world in Afghanistan, in Africa. So I didn't want to be day trading. I wanted some sort of swing trading strategy that I could trade off daily and weekly charts. So it started to evolve, um, you know, in the third year, uh, and then I started to be profitable. And then just over a year ago, I started the online diary at Wave 5 Trade. To keep me honest, really, I, I put them out there. I put the watch list out there, when to buy, where to put stock loss. So you can't change that. And you've got subscribers looking at that. Um, and it, it's, it's there. Um, so And how I manage that trade uh, with my trade management strategies, um, it doesn't change. Uh, and that's kept me honest and kept me profitable. Okay, so you did that blog. Uh, I know sometimes when I write about you know different stocks and, and trade and stuff, it definitely helps me uh, hone my strategies as well. Well, we've had Paul Bradby here, and he's founder of Wave5Trade.com, uh, giving us his approach to the markets. Paul, thanks for joining us. Uh, have a good swim there this afternoon, and uh, we hope to have you back on again. Thank you very much. Take care.